Hello, 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 and welcome to Moving Mountains for You. This is Iceleth Deladon. I go by Sachi Ice Queen. Um, and uh, I go by Sachi Ice Queen on a lot of social medias. Uh, it's kind of like my stage name. Uh, today we have such a special guest. Um, uh, we met um, in an amazing conference. It was a global conference on Clubhouse, and it was super awesome. And it uh, featured so many different types of languages and just in so many different types in, in a lot of countries. And so um, I was just so excited to have her on for you to hear today. Um, all of these uh, videos and um, recordings are for Learning Idiom. Um, which Learning Idiom is a virtual vocational academy. We teach English and Spanish. And, and so I'm super excited for my viewers, subscribers, and listeners to be able to hear um, Kayla. Um, she is a language coach. She lives in Spain and she um, helps people with confidence. And so um, Kayla, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and you know what, um, what, uh, who, are, who is Kayla? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for the introduction, Sachi, and for inviting me to, to be here with you today. I'm, I'm really excited for, for our chat. Um, like, like Sachi said, my name is Kayla, and I am a language coach, uh, language and confidence coach, I suppose you could call me as well. Um, I'm an American originally from upstate New York, and I've been located in Spain now for about the past three years, almost three years I've been here. Um, so what I do with my language coaching is I help people, other entrepreneurs and online professionals find a way to speak effortlessly, naturally, and confidently in their English uh, with a, a set plan of only practicing between 10 and 15 minutes a day to achieve those results. So it's, uh, it's been a crazy ride and something that um, I think just puts together everything that, that I've done until this point to uh, really concentrate the years that I've spent getting to the, the point of confidence I have in my second language of Spanish, being able to condense all of that into a three month program for, for others who are doing the same in English. So that's a little bit about me. That's awesome, you know, because, um, you know, I know a lot of people that live in Spain now because of Clubhouse, um, but I, I knew a little bit um, before, um, but I think it's so important that um, people need to learn and perfect their language, or even if they want to learn another one. Um, you know, my family's from Central America, and so the literacy rate over there is only 30%. And so um, that's the main reason why me and, you know, six other ladies were like, we got to do something about this, you know, they have to learn their language, and they have to have the option to to learn it in a way that's fun, in a way that, you know, mm -hmm. they want to do it. Um, and so that's, that's awesome that you do that for so many people. Um, so my first question is, how do you help people overcome that language barrier? Yeah, uh, there's, there's a lot of different steps and components to this and many different people have uh, their, their methods. But what I do is I, I break it down into different sections within my program to help people really define what their barriers are, first of all, um, because oftentimes it's very hard for someone who's learning a language and, and they get to just like a, they hit a wall and they're like, I just can't get better and I don't know what else to do and all I do is study, but they feel they, they're not making any progress. So normally that has to, that boils down to not really knowing what their true barriers are. Um, and then they're not able to create an action plan to overcome those barriers either. So. Maybe someone knows that in general, they're struggling with speaking with confidence, natural speech, but if they can't identify those true setbacks and lay out their vision of what they want to accomplish, then they're never going to do anything with it. So um, fluency mindset is a really big part of this, uh, understanding what we want to achieve so that we can then decide how we want to achieve it moving forward together. So that's one aspect. Um, and then for the gaining confidence part, I really work on, on the spoken speech aspect of language because this is where I felt in, in my uh, second language that I was learning, it's where I felt held back for the longest time. It's where it was hardest for me to feel confident. So I focus on the aspects of phonetics, which is how humans produce and perceive language and different sounds. I focus on the aspects of phonetics that are most relevant to each person's linguistic background specifically to help them feel and get the results quickly that, that they're looking for regarding their speech habits. So, that, you know, that, that feeling where it just feels weird to speak another language, 
we can say goodbye to that and, and actually adapt uh, a, new, a new way of speaking or adopt a new, a new personality for ourselves. And then confidence training is something that uh, comes after that, where we work on reshaping how we perceive ourselves in the language so that we can turn those high pressure moments into something that we can actually take advantage of, show ourselves off, show off our skills and uh, get all of those amazing opportunities and make those connections and have those experiences that having other languages allows us to, to have. That's awesome because, you know, like my mom, she, you know, English is not her first language. The first language is Spanish. And so um, I remember so many times where I would have to translate for her. And there were so many cases where I didn't really need to translate for her. She just didn't have the confidence to know that she could understand or that she could respond. And so I think that's, mm -hmm. that's super like important in any kind of language learning is to be confident in what you know and um, not be scared of, oh, are they gonna understand me or not? You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's that saying, you know, um, if nobody's gonna open the door if you don't knock on it, you know? And so, yeah. So for you to just uh, be confident in what you're doing and confident in what, how you're, you're speaking is very extremely important as well, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's awesome that you do that for all of your, your students and your clients. Um, and so our next question is, um, what is your favorite thing about what you do for a living? Hmm, that's a really, really good question. Uh, and I think there are two things that come to mind at first. Um, the first one is just being able to have the privilege to work with people from all over the world and from all different linguistic backgrounds, because I feel so honored when they open up to me about their language learning experiences when they were growing up or, or what language has been like for them, uh, that, that story, that journey over all of these years. It's a really personal thing to open up about. Um, the things that I work on with language aren't where we're talking about you know grammar and vocabulary and phrasal verbs, it's something that's much more personal. Um, so when people open up about these things, it's a real honor for me. I feel very privileged to, to listen to what they're sharing because they're also sharing with me a, a bunch of um, cultural aspects of what they've grown up with, what their environments have been like, the struggles that they face uh, based on their situation and circumstances. So um, I just think that makes me so much more aware of you know, not as a professional of how to help these people and how to support them, but also just as a person, how to better relate to others that come from those backgrounds. And that's really important to me. Um, and then the second one I would say is the aha moments that people have. Those moments, because I can remember those for myself in Spanish, especially when I was learning phonetics, the first time that you're able to say something or speak and you say to yourself, wow, like I love the way I sound. I love the sound of my own voice. And when I hear things like that from my clients, that's what, um, it just makes my heart soar. Like it just, it just brings tears to my eyes because it's such a beautiful thing to know that someone, you know, I can facilitate those transformations that people were able to give to me uh, years ago as well. So those aha moments are uh, really those things that keep pushing me forward. That's awesome because, you know, I'm a teacher as well. And so there's nothing like, I totally get it. Like I totally relate mm -hmm. to that because, you know, um, I, um, I get people published. So I, you know, I make them publish authors, co-authors and ghostwriters. And like, for me, like the biggest satisfaction is when they are, they can like, they, they have that look on their face where they're like, oh, wow, it really happened, you know? Um, this is one of their dreams that they've always wanted to do. And I got to be able to be part of that process. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, um, it's amazing to be able to do what you love at the same time and also make other people happy, um, yeah. you know? And so that, that's awesome that, that, you, that you do that. Um, so my next question is, so how does confidence affect your performance? Yeah, really good question, especially since what I do has a lot to do with confidence and how how we how we perform, how we um, how we express ourselves in the language. And your confidence in many ways is your performance, I suppose we could say, because it affects how others perceive us, regardless of how advanced we feel we feel in our skills when we're on our own or in a really comfortable environment or with friends. At the end of the day, what you are showing off as confidence to other people, whether it's a new employer or new potential friends or, um, you know, you're an entrepreneur and you're on a sales call, whatever you are showing off is that confidence. 
is something that's going to affect how other people are seeing us, whether they are, are conscious of it or not. So the more confident you are, the clearer your, your communication will be as well, because you'll speak up without fear. You'll actually say the things that you have to share um, and be able to say them calmly, you know, not that, that quick, when we start to ramble because we're super nervous or we don't know what to say, we get scared. Um, so it makes our communication much clearer. And the phonetics component of my language coaching that comes before the confidence and public speaking modules that we go through, this helps people feel even more confident because they know that they're controlling their message that the way they want to. They know they sound clear. They know that people are going to understand. They know the mistakes that could cause confusion phonetically, you know, with their pronunciation and that sort of thing. And they know how to sound captivating with their message and, and how to look for those signs uh, from their audience. So um, confidence and, and performance really go, they go hand in hand there. That, yeah, that's definitely true. Like I, I remember when I was learning Spanish uh, because even though, um, I'm first generation born citizen and I literally had a different language than my mom. Um, it was still, it was still a process of me having to understand and me being confident in what I was really saying and, you know, not doubting myself whenever I would mm -hmm. say something. I think it's uh, super important to, to definitely, you know, speak with confidence. I think there's, you have a different tone, like you just, mm -hmm. You, you, you know, you're more secure about what you're learning and at the same time, and even though um, I'm not a na native speaker, but um, I have my certification to teach Spanish, and so um, when I, when I was studying, it's kind of if like my, like it, because they say that you're truly not bilingual until you can think the, in, in the other language, and I've had dreams in Spanish. And so I think it's pretty cool to, to get to that level of like, oh, wow, you know, um, your mind kind of just changes. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it's awesome that, you know, you are part of that process for so many people. Um, do you, how long have you done it? Oh, long for language coaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, officially with the programs I've been doing now about, about a year. So that's uh, when I officially took the leap. This was all something that was, um, I was very passionate about it and it's all I talked about and it's all I did in my free time. And then after uh, COVID hit, I was like, why don't I just do this all the time if it's what I love to do? So, um, so that's what I decided to do. And it's been the best decision I've, I've ever made. So I couldn't imagine doing anything else now at this point. That's pretty awesome uh, that you chose to hire yourself. <laughs> I know, right? It's so empowering. Like, yeah, I, I got a job. I hired myself. <laughs> the boss and the employee. <laughs> that's, that's awesome, though, because, you know, so many people, they uh, struggle with that, you know, a nine to five. They're, uh, they work, but they um, work unhappily, you know. Um, there, of course, there are some people that they love their job. You know, they love what they do. Yeah. They like to be part of that organization. I was just like you that I just um, didn't find myself um, in those places that I, I knew that uh, I wanted to own my own time and I wanted to um, work under under just certain conditions that I wanted to be able to put those conditions, not somebody else put them on me. So um, my last question is my favorite one because it's kind of hard for everyone and everyone has a different response. And so uh, it's, if life was teaching you a lesson, what would you say it would be teaching you using one word? That's a really good, really, really good question. Um, and I would say that for me, I go, I would go back and forth between, between two different words that have been uh, very predominant, very present for me uh, in, in this past year. And those would be consistency and patience. And I think both of them go hand in hand. Um, and definitely as an entrepreneur, I felt these things that these are lessons that, that life has been teaching me, but also as a language learner, you know, these are things that I was already conditioning myself for, for a long time, because through learning language, you know, we, we want those results. We want that feeling. We want something that is so intangible to just feel confident or to feel effortless or to feel natural in a language that is not our native language. And we want that to be such an instant thing, but consistency of, you know, having a small, small, tiny baby steps, even if it's just 10 to 15 minutes a day, 
can get you there in the long run as long as you're being consistent. Um, so it's not about the short sprint, it's, it's about the marathon. And then a huge aspect of that is patience. Um, just trusting in yourself that by doing those consistent actions, you will achieve the results that you're looking for. Um, knowing that with a little bit of patience, everything will just click together when you're sort of least expecting it. Um, and they're normally in moments where we have through our consistency created natural habits or natural communication uh, patterns or ways of expression that we've been doing it little by little so often that we didn't even realize that it was changing. And then all of a sudden, you know, three months after starting some sort of uh, new consistent uh, ritual or, or practicing something else to, to get to where you want to be in language, someone will say something to you and be like, wow, like you sound like you should be on a TED talk. Like, why don't you go do a TED talk? Or wow, I've never heard anyone express themselves so clearly in, in Spanish and it's not your native language. Or, you know, all, all of a sudden someone will say something and you realize, oh my God, I reached my goal and I didn't even realize it, you know? So with that patience and, and trusting in yourself a little bit through that consistency, uh, you'll always get to where you wanna go, whatever, whatever the goal is that you have. That's awesome. You know, um, patience was also my word. <laughs> so uh, we That's have, that. Um, you know, I am a special needs mom. And so mm -hmm. um, I have an autistic boy. Um, he hasn't been diagnosed because he's super high functioning. Um, thank God. But yeah, he, um, he taught me a lot of patience, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, having to understand a different way of learning, having to understand, yeah. you know, how to kind of um, balance the whole like discipline and just so many things. So I feel like um, also being, you know, first generation born citizen, you're basically grow up and everything is unknown because mm -hmm. even if you, even there's no direction, like in, in my opinion, when you are an immigrant and you come here, you have no idea the possibilities or the opportunities, you have no idea even the language, you know? And so yeah. it's, um you grow up in a, in a, house that where there's so many unknowns you know and so I I think patience was something that I had to learn also I'm one of six kids and I'm the youngest so oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so I had to uh, I had to have a lot of patience growing up and um but I think uh definitely when you when you choose to walk in patience and when you choose to you know like you said be consistent um there's def you definitely reap the benefits of that and you know you definitely reap um more more joy than you, than you really think, um, just because um, patience is, is a virtue, like they say, and that's awesome. Consistency is so important, especially for any entrepreneur, anybody, any out, any business out there that's struggling, you know, maybe uh, you're not being consistent. Um, just let me, let me tell you, uh, you're worth more than the excuses your mind tells you. Mm -hmm. um, so apart from being a teacher and in, in learning idiom, um, I am a director for, for the nonprofit. I also am a spiritual life coach. And so um, that's something that I always tell my, my clients, you know, because being a life coach, you kind of uh, work with the mind a lot. <laughs> yeah. And so um, it's, it's, a, it's a joy, though, because I get to, I get to do what I love. And I know that you're doing what you love. And um, I definitely want to hear some Spanish. I want to hear I want to, your favorite phrase in Spanish uh, for our listeners and subscribers. Definitely feel free to tell us what your favorite uh, uh, phrase is before we wrap it up. Yeah, bueno, eh, una frase en particular, algo, no sé, no sabría decirte lo como para una, una frase, una expresión, porque... Una, una cosa muy popular en, en España es que siempre tienen refranes, hay un refrán para todo, así que siempre me están contando un nuevo refrán todos los días eh, y eso son muy, son muy graciosos, pero en general es, es poder expresarme en el idioma y sentir el, el, el ritmo y la entonación y, y otra manera de, de expresar mi propia personalidad y actitud y, y siento que cuando hablo en español tengo otra voz, tengo otra... Mm, otra personalidad, tengo otro, otro estilo de humor, hay muchas cosas que cambian eh, en español y, y yo agradezco mucho al idioma por, por darme eso, porque es una experiencia única, una experiencia muy única. 
¡Qué bonito! Ya la escucharon, ella, es de, ella vive en España, por eso tiene el, el uh, acento español. Ajá, el acento, el acento español. Sí, yeah, sí. I, uh, I remember when I was uh, studying Spanish and my mom would always be like, no, you know, in Spain, if you were in Spain, um, you know, they wouldn't be calling it zapato, they would be calling it zapato, and I'm like, ah, okay, mom. It sounded so weird to me at first, because I, I learned in school Latino Spanish, because in, in America, you, you don't often, in the United States, you're not usually finding people or professors who are, who are Spain Spanish speakers, um, so, but then when I started traveling and finding opportunities, Spain is just sort of where uh, I ended up, it just sort of like happened, um, and then it kept calling me back after that. It stole a piece of my heart. And through uh, learning phonetics, I think that was the such a, an impactful thing for me for understanding all of the different accents and, and ways to pronounce different things because they're the things that are very automatic for us to understand or try to perceive differently in our native language. But then when I had to apply this to Spanish, I would hear someone with a different accent. And I'm like, I, I just have no idea what's going on. And it was so discouraging because it was like, I just spent, you know, five years studying a language and I can't even speak it. And then someone speaks to me from another country and I have no idea what's happening, you know? So. No, yeah, uh, it definitely <laughs> happens. It definitely happens. Like I still, you know, I, I've been in the Spanish speaking world for many years and I still come across some accents where I'm like, wow, where are you from? You know, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, and like me, like I was, um, my family is from Nicaragua, from Central America, but I grew up with a Colombian, with a Colombian family. And mm. so most, um, most uh, people from, from Colombia speak super fast, but <clears throat> most people from Nicaragua, they're actually known for like speaking slow and like, you know, and uh, it was just so funny to me to to kind of put those two worlds together. And that's why every yeah. time I speak Spanish, they're always like, where are you from? Like, you have a very you, different accent. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's because it's a little bit of Central America and South America kind of mushed together because one of my best friends was Colombian. And so uh, I know those delicious arepas, you know, I'm sure, uh -huh. you know, uh, over there in Spain, um, my sisters went to Ibiza and they're, they're like, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. They have some amazing food. Um, but yeah, they really enjoyed Spain. So um, thank you so much for your time. Any shout outs you want to give or any uh, upcoming uh, classes or in any workshops or um, events that you have coming up that you want yeah. to share? Yeah, well, thank you, Sachi. Um, it's been a pleasure. And I would just like to give a shout out to anyone who is a language learner or, you know, a first generation, um, you know, immigrant in, to another place or anyone who is a business owner or an entrepreneur. You know, I think uh, both you and I can relate to the experiences that all those people have. Um, and with consistency and, and patience, you guys will all get to where you want to go. And, and we believe in you. Um, and for, for anyone who wants more support when it comes to the things that I do in language coaching, um, feel free to, to reach out to me or just send me a message. Um, I'm always making content or free trainings or, or things like that to support people who are uh, going through struggles um, with, their, with their language and, and barriers. Um, so I just, I live to, to serve you guys. So you guys can find me on Instagram uh, at Kayla Belouche. Uh, so just my, my name. Um, and yeah, and I would love to connect with you all further and, and see how I can support you. Yes, and for anybody that doesn't know how to spell that, uh, since we have new uh, new, new uh, people that uh, don't know how to spell the English language yet, it's uh, K-A-Y-L-A-B-E-L-U-S-H. And you can definitely find her on Instagram. She's also on Clubhouse. That's where we met. So shout out yep. to the makers of Clubhouse uh-huh <laughs> it's my favorite social media app right now and uh you know it was really cool um to to be on the stage with you talking about owning your voice um it was it was pretty awesome uh i that was one of my favorite experiences in the whole this whole year just uh being part of of uh, like three different rooms and um when it came to the to the conference but um yeah i was just so excited to get you on because i was like man she is just like she's just uh, awesome and i heard you speak and i was like i really you know how they say i really resonated with what you said and i was like i'm very very selective when it comes to my podcast and when it comes to my um viewers on my subscribers because i like to protect you know their ears 
protect yeah. what they see. Um, and so I was just like, oh, I need to, I need to definitely highlight her because uh, she's awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Sachi. I think, I think the same to you. And I, I feel so, um, so blessed to, to have been connected with you there on Clubhouse. So social media is, is great for connecting us. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, shout out to uh, um, Simply E and uh, the Lingua Couturial team because um, they, we would have never met if it wasn't for them. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely uh, it, was an, it was an amazing experience. And I'm sure you, um, like me, was like pretty well, like honored to definitely be on that stage with all of those amazing educators. Yeah. So, but thank you so much for your time and um, any last remarks or any kind of uh, closing remarks you wanna uh, shout outs or anything you wanna give to anybody uh, that's gonna be listening to this? Um, no, just thank you to you, Sachi, for, for doing all of these things that are, are so, giving so much value to, to your audience um, and protecting their ears and making sure that everything that they hear are things that are actually really gonna push them forward and benefit them and support them. Um, we need more people like you out there doing what you're doing. So, and you seem like a jack of all trades. You're like, there's always another thing that you say you can do. I'm like, ah, Sachi does everything. She's uh, and a super mom on top of it. So um, yeah, thank you for inviting me. It's been a, a true honor to speak with you today. Yeah, I think it, it definitely boils down to me being, uh, again, first generation born citizen. You know, my mom is always constantly pushing all her kids to go for those opportunities to get, you know, go to the next level, reach for something else, you know, always keep going and always keep hustling how they say, and, you know, mm -hmm. just always, um, you know, look for those opportunities and take advantage of those opportunities because, um, you know, that's why they call it the land of opportunity here. And so um, yeah. a lot of people tell me the same thing. Yeah. You're, you do a lot of things. I'm like, yeah, it's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. It's my mom. She yeah. did it all. <laughs> pushes me, inspires me, and definitely motivates me to just always want for more and always, um, you know, do something with excellence, not just do it, um, you know, um, at a, at a C level, but always like try to strive for that A, try to strive for um, quality instead of quantity. And so, yeah. um, you know, I definitely wanted to have you on because I definitely think you're such a quality type of person. Mm. And so, um, definitely for all of your, um, your view or your, um, followers and teachers and, uh, you know, clients keep it, keep up with Kayla. She's awesome. And she is definitely going to help you so much. And I'm just uh, so blessed to be able to know her as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you have any questions and if you want to ever publish your book, definitely let me know because, I just want to tell anyone that's out there, nobody has your memories, nobody has your story, nobody is you, you are unique. Um, and so I always like to end everything with um, definitely a little bit of motivation for anybody out there that might be going through something and they don't know how to get out of it. So, um, and if they don't speak that language or if they don't know what's going on, ask for help. You know, I, I think as teachers, that's one of our favorite things for students to do because you, nobody knows if nobody knows <laughs> like yeah. nobody, nobody can read your mind so I think that's definitely important um, for you to do so um, but thank you so much for being on here and thank you so much for being you <laughs> oh thank you Sachi same to you <laughs> all right well take care god bless and peace be with you thank you goodbye bye everyone